so come on, come on in. Plenty of seats. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. As we celebrate this Eucharist, the center of our faith, <coughs> let us be mindful of the history of our community here, and of many communities throughout the country. As we celebrate heritage, culture, languages, and the spirit of the black community who has brought so much to our world today, Amen. to whom we are today. So we entrust especially the needs of those who lead us. We entrust our prayers because we know that God will provide. Amen. Amen. Let us ask the Lord now to forgive our sins, so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the second marriage. <coughs> Thank you. 
us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
on one cheek, offer the other one as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who loved you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount, but rather love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back then your reward will be great and you will be children of the most high for he himself is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will in turn be measured out <coughs> to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's remain standing. <laughs> First of all, I want to, before I begin my homily, I want to say welcome to Archbishop Gustavo, to Holy Redeemer, where we have probably the most diverse parish in the entire archdiocese. <laughs> He's wounded, 
teacher. <laughs> the mother looked at him and said, didn't I tell you to pray for him? For her? Didn't I tell you to pray for her? Didn't you do that? He said, I did. I prayed for an early death before the semester. <laughs> and it didn't happen. I think sometimes, as we hear this gospel today about loving one another, Forgiving your enemies, we like to make light of that. We make light of it by saying things like, well, I love them, but I'm not going to forgive them, or I'm not going to let it go. It's a way around saying, I am not going to love. I refuse to love. And I think therein lies a real problem for us. I think in reality, when it comes to our enemies and praying for our enemies, we should probably pray more for ourselves. That our attitudes change about the person that we hate. Amen. Usually it's more about us than it is about them. That we come to that place where we can say, I love. That's the challenge for each and every one of us. Not to simply get along, not simply to turn and look the other way. It really is to love our enemies. This is one of the most difficult gospels to live. Because I don't know about you, but a lot of times I want revenge. <laughs> they got over on me and I'm going to get back on them. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. You know, we all have those people in our lives. And when they come walking toward us, we say, sweet Jesus, <laughs> does this have to happen today? I read this, and I think it's really very appropriate for what we are looking at and how we are celebrating this gospel, this Sunday, and Black History Month. Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they are doing. And he said in another place, what is impossible for man or woman is possible for God. So with God's grace, it is possible. It is possible. But only with Jesus Christ, who gives us the example of what it means to love his enemies and to break the cycle of violence. The public story might help just a little. Having heard Buddha speak against returning evil for evil, a man decides to see if Buddha practices what he preaches. The man shouts all kinds of abuse at the great teacher and then calls him a stupid fool. Buddha listens patiently. When the man runs out of bad things to say, Buddha says, my son, if one refuses to accept a gift from another, to whom does the gift go? He replies, any fool knows that. The gift goes back to the giver. My son, says Buddha, you have given me much verbal abuse. I refuse to accept your gift. <laughs> the man is dumbfounded. Buddha continues. The one who slams another is like someone who spits at the sky. His spittle does not dirty or soil the sky. It only comes back to 
soil the face of the one who spits. Jesus asked his disciples to follow the basic imperative of loving generously, even to loving our enemies as he did on the cross. If not, like spittle, our hatred or our desire for vengeance will come back to us. To us. The challenge of the gospel today is one that all of us have to practice. You might say, well, Father, I really don't hate anybody. Or, Father, when I look at the hatred of what's going on in the Middle East, or the hatred that goes on in our nation's capital, when I look at all I can't do anything about that. You're right. You probably can. But you know what? You can deal with the hatred in your home. You can deal with the hatred in your neighborhood. You can deal with the hatred in your parish. You can deal with the hatred in our communities, on our places of work. We can deal with the hatred there by not giving in to violence, by not returning anger for anger, for letting go of those things that we want to hold on and we want to allow to fester and we want to let it build up until there's an explosion. Right? And it comes out in ugly ways. And a lot of times, the anger that we have comes out against people that don't deserve what we spew out. Right? You know, even if you look at what's going on in our government, all that venom, all that ugliness, all that just hatred that we experience, <coughs> they go home. The people suffer. Because they don't do what they're supposed to do. People suffer. Lives are affected. The poor are not cared for. Because of anger and bitterness and hatred and rivalry. It goes on the national level, on the worldwide level, but it also goes on in our homes and in our churches. And that's where my brothers and sisters I think we need to deal with it head on, as Christ does. Christ on the cross said, forgive them for they know not what they do. We're not talking just about the people standing at the cross. We're talking about those who brought him to trial, those who jeered him, those who judged him, those who sat upon him, those who killed him, everyone, including us, including us. We have to remember that. He died for us. He shows us that he would not get back at those who did what they did against him. Rather, he forgave. So if we want to say, I can't forgive, then we really need to turn our lives and to embrace more closely the life of Jesus Christ and what Jesus calls us to. Last week's Gospel of the Beatitudes told us the blessings and the woes. Today, Jesus gives us concrete examples of what he taught. If they seemed somewhat theoretical last Sunday, now he gets right down to the point, and he says, this is what you have to do. How to respond to the wonderful events of life and how to transform them into occasions of grace, which are blessings. The readings today in particular are particularly apt for February 24th, the beginning of the last week of Black History Month. One of the greatest commentaries we have on Jesus' teaching in this gospel can be found in the address of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King that he gave when he accepted the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. <coughs> Calling on the whole human family in the way Jesus called his disciples, King said, we must evolve for all human conflict a method which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. Like Jesus, King preached from experience, having been arrested nine times, stabbed, and stoned, thrown at him. 
He continued to preach nonviolence. In the face of such persecution, he proclaimed, I have the audacity to believe that people everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. Jesus' concrete description of ways to love the, our enemies explains the attitudes and activities of the blessed ones who weep because they share the concern for God's world. They not only weep, but they are willing to stand with the poor and the hungry to the point of being persecuted on account of the Son of Man. They continue to share Martin Luther King's faith that what self-centered people have torn down, people who are other-centered can build up and nonviolent redemptive good will proclaim the rule of the land. For over two millennia, the Lord has addressed his disciples in the words of today's gospel. To you who hear, I say, love your enemies. We must have the audacity to believe it is possible. Only love can redeem us. Only love can redeem our world. CIA to please come forward. <laughs> Loving God, we ask your blessing upon our brothers and sisters as we send them forth to break open yet again the word, your most holy word. We ask that you continue to enlighten them as they continue on their journey of growth in Jesus Christ. We look forward to the day when they will join us at the table of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, blessing of the Lord upon you. Go in peace. church, that we may be a model of mercy and love to all who look to us for forgiveness and refuge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For leaders of all nations, that they may work together to tear down walls, reconcile disagreements, 
and bring a just peace to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have been hurt by others, may God grant them the strength and grace to forgive. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For vocation, that our communities may promote and pray for those called to the priesthood and consecrated life, that they may respond with gladness to their call. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For continued collaboration between Holy Redeemer family and the St. Cyprian Catholic Evo community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That we as faith communities may be challenged to take Jesus' word to heart and turn the other cheek when we are wrong. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. God of all mercies, we look to you in our weakness. Help us to understand your ways and guide us in showing mercy and compassion to all whom we meet. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you do not cease to spurs us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you say before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we exalt the power of your love and proclaim our joy at the salvation that comes from you. We join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts as with our end we acclaim. Passover with his disciples. A 
as he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be brought for you for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Mystery of always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Gustavo our Bishop, Michael his auxiliary. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our blessed brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Because I've heard the word of God in a great humbly. A very challenging one. As we pray, our Father, the Lord himself gives us the opportunity to forgive. In other words, as we heard, to love somebody who has hurt us. To make not only our relationship better, but the world better. Before we say to our Father, let us think in one person who has truly hurt us, hurt you. <coughs> and with God's grace, make a decision <coughs> to love that person more and better.
God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I ask the leader of the St. Cyprian community to come forward. Everyone, please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is McConnor, the chairman of St. Sibrani Bokami Community. Good morning, Abdusson Chicago. Good morning, Karakoli. I want to use this opportunity to thank everybody for being here. It's not been a, an easy one, but I'll also use this opportunity to thank Father Kevin for making her feel like home to us. Thank you. And, uh, the love you gave us, everything, loving us unconditionally. You made us feel like there's nowhere else to be but here. And also, I want to use this opportunity to thank for the Archbishop of Gustavo for celebrating with us. This is a special day for us. And we have something in our tradition. We as Igbos, there's something we're known for. Wherever we go, we have we present gifts. That's what they know us for. And uh, you can look around. <laughs> it's our tradition, and um, we wouldn't stop doing this. Today won't be the last time, it will always be like that. If you look around, there's a lot of us here. If, if you mind, you know, anybody wearing something like what I have on, please stand up. <laughs> what we call this. <laughs> Isiago means head of the lion. We, we present it to people of royalty, and we have something like that to present to you both, if you accept it for me. Can you come forward, please? Bishop.
But first of all, thank you uh, to the St. Cyprian Evo community because you enrich us here at Holy Redeemer and you enrich the life of the church and we are glad that you are part of our parish and a part of our family here. And you know that I've always said it, anything I can do for you, I will. Just like any of my parishioners here, anything that I can do for them, I will. But I do want to tell you that in the gospel today, it is said, loan without expecting repayment. I think the Archbishop and I would like to ask you all for a loan. Now's the day to ask. <laughs> but I do want to remind everyone that after Mass, please go to the hall where we will continue our celebration in feasting and celebration. After that communion meditation song, you should have worked up an appetite and ready to eat. <laughs> a very blessed Sunday and a week in which you have opportunities to love more and better. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is now ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.